Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is for you, I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is the Desperately Dating Podcast, Episode 7. I'm joined by my wonderful and wise stepmom, Karen. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm, dude, I, I love doing this. I love the process <laughs> of creating the show with you. And um, today's episode is all about the idea of, well, there's two things here. One is like how to find the one and what is that? what does that mean? And then the idea of what's a good fit. And really, we're going to th- hopefully debunk the idea of the one. Like, ooh. Because I think some people heard me say, how do you find the one? And they're like, immediately, their hands raised. And they're ready yeah. to get into a fist fight match. <laughs> and be like, there, there's no such thing as the one. <laughs> so let's discuss it with that first. Um, I think we got to be careful in this conversation about the idea of the one. Because there are some religious undertones. And I don't want to step on anybody's feet here or stomp on religion. But I, you know, pardon my French, I think the one is fucking bullshit. <laughs> I hate that crap. Uh, there's something you told me early on, really early on when I first met you, actually, that I, I always has stuck with me, this idea that dating is about numbers. Mm-hmm. Dating is about numbers. Um, I think that if you meet enough people, you're bound to find one that, you know, fits the bill, that you have a good fit with. Do I think that there's just one person out there that you know, fits the bill, fits you as a person. No, I I think that's complete bullshit. However, that being said, I think that a lot of times talking about the one is, has become sort of shorthand for when we're talking about finding a relationship that uh, matters, that works, that um, is a good fit for us. I think that's what people are talking about when they say they want to find the one. But I think you don't think there's one, at least I'm going to talk for myself. How about that? I don't think there's like what 11, 9 billion people on the planet. I've <laughs> there's already, a lot of people. There's yeah. a lot of people on the planet. <laughs> there's no fucking way there's only one person for you. No. And there's not, and I really yeah. just think that, and even if that's not what you mean when you say the one, a mm-hmm. lot of people refer to the one as like the one I'm going to marry. Right. I've said that before too. Like I, I totally get where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. But my point is like, you, your point and my point is that dating's about fit. Mm-hmm. And you can be a good fit with so many people. Can I tell you about the Tupperware analogy? <laughs> Please do. I've never told you this. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, have you ever tried to fit uh, a round Tupperware into a square Tupperware? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't fucking work. But then you can find Tupperware that are both made for sandwiches. They're both kind of got a rectangular shape. Right. And they kind of fit together like if you force it, but it's mm-hmm. still not. A, it's, a, it's an okay fit. Like yeah. they can, you can put it in the cupboard, but it's really not a great fit. But then you find two Tupperwares that are both made for sandwiches. <laughs> They're the exact same brand. They got the same little indents. They're a great fit. <laughs> and dang, those fit in the cupboard absolutely the way they were intended. Those are, yeah. There's better fits than others is my point, right? You can be in a relationship with someone who's a, a fairly good fit. They're both sandwiched cup Tupperware, <laughs> but it's still not exactly what you need someday. Like, mm-hmm. um, We're going to talk about this idea that mediocre isn't good. No, it's not. Yeah, it's not. I mean, good enough is not good either. And I think that's what a lot of people unfortunately strive for or settle for is, Mm. well, it seems like it's good enough. You know, we work in most of the good ways. Uh, We like the same movies. We, you know, I don't know, have, we like each other's families or, you know, some of those things that, that do, I think, play a part in a good fit. Um, But that's not what it's all about. I think what's sad is it comes down to a lot of like self-worth. Like how much, how valuable do you think you are? Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, I think they're only valuable enough to find good enough rather than to realize, no, hell no. Like I, I'm really, I deserve a great relationship. I mean, someone out there listening feels like my relationship's fine, but man, mm-hmm. go get what you really want. Go find the one that like, dude, I, I've never seen anybody more excited to see their wife than my dad when we were coming back from Cincinnati. He was like a little toddler. And I mean this in the kindest way. Like yeah. he was so <laughs> excited. like, is that my wife's car? Nope. Is that a car? Like he was like, he was so excited to see you because it's such a meaningful thing to him. And I, I think that's so telling. Like when you when you miss your wife, when you miss your husband, mm-hmm. when you miss the person you're dating or with, like, man, um, I don't know. I, I just think that don't settle. Like, please mm-hmm. do not settle for something less than what you could have. But, you know, I think this whole concept of there being the one, you know, yeah. whether or not that truly is meant to be just one person or, you yeah. know, Maybe just to convey that it's it's difficult, you know, it uh, doesn't happen every day that you find somebody that you fit so easily with. I think that creates yeah. some fear in people, too, and can lead them to settle for for less or for mediocre, for good enough. Um, because, you know, be, start to become afraid to hope, you know, afraid to hope that you'll actually ever find that person because it seems so rare. 
fear is a lot irrational. Like there's so many moments in my life where I'm like, I'll be like, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm like, wait a minute, that's ridiculous bullshit. But like, mm-hmm. it's really easy to fall into that trap. Um, and we, we've, I feel like we've said this so many times, but it's so true. Just keep going on dates. Just keep trying. Mm-hmm. Just keep, keep attempting. Um, yeah, and play that numbers game. You have to, you mm-hmm. have to have hope that you'll find a good fit. Um, I, I just want to, you know, a great relationship is obvious. It's, mm-hmm. It hits you in the face and you know it. And if you're sitting there going, mm, ah, then no, it's not what you want. It's, it's, if you have to think about it and you're like, someone asks you, like, do you love your relationship? And you're like, mm, eh, yeah. wrong. <laughs> you had to think about it. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, move on. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. It drives me nuts. That's actually become, you know, one of the rules by which I live my life. And that's that indecision means no. You know, if you have to wonder about it, like, is this right? Is it going to work? It's, it's <laughs> so if you're just at Ikea, no. Yeah. A couch or something, yeah. You're like, if you're not like, I love that couch. Well, then don't get the couch. <laughs> yeah. That's why I buy pants. If, yeah. I, if I put on pants and I'm like, eh, you know, yeah. clothes, I, I, go, I go to Ross and buy clothes all the time because I'm cheap and it's what I love. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and by the way, Ross, if you're out there and you're looking for cheap clothes, go to Ross. It's great. <laughs> um, I prefer TJ Maxx myself. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. I mean, like, yeah, it's but the, the same point thing. is like, if you're, if you're trying on pants and you're like, mm, I'm not sure. Dating is the same way. Yeah, if, it's if dating's that way. Sure, jobs are that way too. But if it's you not don't just, love your job, if you're not sure, mm-hmm. it's, if they're not sure about you, I've been in relationships where someone is kind of wishy washy and in and out. And if mm-hmm. they're indecisive, if they're not sure if they like you, eh, move on. I've done that that buzzer not noise twice. I'm so sorry. If, like it hurts your ears. But my <laughs> but like really like move on. There are like <laughs> I I I was in a relationship where with someone once where it's like I just felt unappreciated and unwanted, and it's like why did I waste so much time with someone who seems like they didn't want me find someone who does want you and does appreciate you because that's out there it really is no i Um, agree i think that you bring up kind of an interesting point we could talk about a little bit and that's that if you're in a one-sided relationship mm -hmm. you know you are just totally into them you're convinced that they are the one yeah um, but they're not they're pulling away well then what does that say about you you know, are you really, do you have something messed up in you? Are you healthy dating? <laughs> right. Because if yeah. you're fucked up, man. And if you're attracted to a person that rejects you, what does that say about you? Oh, that you're hitting me. That's my, right? that's my sweet spot. Sorry. That's what I've done for years, man. Yep, yep. Um, but I mean, when, uh, here's a couple things. Like when you're, medi- when you're desperately dating, either mediocre feels amazing because you're like, oh, she likes me. Right. Wow, <laughs> and it meets a need, right? Yes. You know, we all have needs for companionship and all those things that we've talked about. Yeah. But also like when you're when you're desperately dating, unhealthy dating might feel good. Unhealthy dating might feel right. That's why it's so important. We've talked in earlier episodes about mm-hmm. get your shit together. You know, do some soul searching, figure out what your priorities are, figure out what your deal breakers are. Like the reason we say all that is because it's important to get your shit figured out so you know how to go into a, a relationship healthy dating. I think so, too. And I also think that when you have your life all together, you have your shit figured out, you're going to be far less inclined to let somebody toxic in there. It's like, I think you're Mm -hmm. just naturally going to be a little bit choosier, you know, because you've had to work hard to get things sorted. And, you know, you don't want to let somebody that could potentially fuck that up. I really, I think I'm going to say this. And my belief is someone out there is going to go, oh, fuck, I feel this so much. Don't be a salesman. Oh, I love this. Don't yeah. sell yourself. Mm-hmm. If you're convincing someone to be with you, mm-hmm. it's wrong. It's just not. Or if you're convincing yourself to be with someone, it goes both ways. Like It totally does. If there's anyone convincing mm-hmm. anyone that this is a good relationship, you shouldn't have to. You right. shouldn't have to convince anybody. Yeah, I think the salesman, the appearance of the salesman on either side is just a sign that you're still desperately dating. Yeah. You know, when you're not desperate, that's when, you know, you're coming from a place of peace and you're you have a better chance of, of finding that right person. And we'll touch on this in a later episode too, but the idea that healthy dating is ease. It's not, it's not like no work, but it's not, it's not a pain in the butt constantly. I mean, that's, if you feel like you're always reaching and always bending over backwards to make it work, that's not right. And uh, I really, I think we should talk about deal breakers at this point because I think what's important is for people listening to we're going to talk about our deal breakers a little bit. And if you don't pay attention to our deal breakers and you tune us out, that's great. But I wanted to get the minds rolling. What are your deal breakers out there? Because it's it's so important to write down like, hey, these things are really, really important to me. And when I find someone and they have a deal breaker, I want to have the, hopefully you have the confidence to say, hey, I don't, this isn't going to work for me because I, I have my values and I have my this and my that that's important to me and I'm going to move on. You know, but there are silly deal breakers. Like I think a lot of times people, women, guys, get caught up on like height or uh, we've talked about finances before, like mm-hmm. things that are like, how important is height? 
when you're mm-hmm. dating someone. Like, are they, you know, like if they're five ten instead of six feet, are you really going to end a relationship with a great person? And if you do, that's pretty shallow and silly. No kidding. Yeah. And then since we've talked about it, how it's a numbers game too. If you limit yourself that, like, you know, on dating profiles, you're saying you're not going to meet with somebody that's under six feet tall. I mean, you're really limiting yourself. And it's better, I think, to cast a wider net and really play that numbers game. Yeah. You know, meet a lot of people. Well, like, would you rather be with someone who's nice and 5'10 or like <laughs> 5'11, but they're they're a pain in the ass? Like, you know, like, yeah, I, I exactly. Mean, really, like, exactly. I, I just, yeah, it's kind of shallow. And I think that there are some deal breakers that are pretty obvious, you know, even Mm. on the first date. So I can talk about some of those because we've talked about how, you know, effective, efficient dating, you know, you are ruthless. You don't go on that second date if something Mm -hmm. pops up that is a deal breaker. So for me, like I can remember going on a date with um, this guy who was pretty apparent early on that he was a bad dad. Uh, You know, he's just kind of a dick to his kids. And I'm just like, you know, not interested. That's a deal breaker for me right there. I'm not going on another date with you. Um, another one is if they're rude to the server, <laughs> forget it. Because I feel yeah. like that really, it's, sh- you know, it sounds silly, but it shows that, you know, maybe they're not as kind at heart. I mean, have you ever known a kind person that was rude no. to a server? No, no, it just doesn't happen. No. What are Even, some of yours? Man, my, my biggest one, and I'm, ex- I'm really excited to hear yours, but my, my biggest deal breaker I've learned like I even say like like you want to find someone beautiful, you want to find someone I think smart is really important, but mm-hmm. the, the biggest deal breaker to me is when someone look at everybody's fucked up. Every single person it has issues, but if they're not aware that they have issues or they're not open to the idea of having issues, like I, I know someone who uh we've been hanging out for a while and um she's incredibly aware of her her areas she needs to do personal growth. And like I'm not looking for somebody perfect, but I'm looking for someone who's Un- at least aware that there's personal growth that needs to take place and open to the idea of maybe not being perfect. Like, I- I'm super fucked up. I need to work on shit. <laughs> but I own it. And Don't I- we all? <laughs> I'm open to it, right? And yeah. if someone isn't open to personal growth, oh, man, I- I'm out. Like, I'm done. I mean, I, I remember mm-hmm. some- I met someone one time and they're like, you think I'm pretty fucked up? I'm like, I think you're more fucked up than you know. <laughs> like, yeah. I-, like, I don't think you have any idea how fucked up you are. Because <laughs> like, um, they've never looked, probably, yeah, right? Cause- and they're yeah. uncomfortable even dealing mm-hmm. with that. Like, it- if someone can really introspection maybe is where I'm going with this, right? If someone's yeah. willing to look mm-hmm. in, w- internally and do journaling or think about their problems and deal with them a little bit, um, that's great. Because then I know they're willing to have conversations with me about mm-hmm. our, our problems in a relationship or are good or are bad. Mm-hmm. But if someone's not open to personal growth or open to change, I'm done. I'm not I'm not doing having a relationship with that person. Mm-hmm. What are some of yours? Yeah, well, I definitely agree on the introspection part and the being open to personal growth. Um, I feel like a growth mindset is uh, it's mature, it's healthy, it's mm. um, it keeps things interesting, you yeah. know. And, and to clarify, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm condescending at no, all. No, 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 not at all. I mean, I think that's that's a really healthy trait that most people should strive to have, and definitely would be a deal breaker if I met somebody that I liked everything else, but they didn't have that, you know. Yeah. Or if they think they're perfect, because I'm yeah. not perfect. But you have to be aware that like. We all have issues. Oh, yeah. completely. And, you know, new new issues pop up, too. You know, you're as life goes on, you get confronted by, mm. you know, new things that you have to learn how to deal with. And I think if you are more in touch with yourself and you're kind of into that growth mindset that you're going to weather those kinds of storms a little bit better. Mm. Um, for another one for me is if they're a boring conversationalist. And again, I think, you know, <laughs> again, that goes without saying, yeah, man. oh, man, you know, like, but and you can tell that usually on the first day, you know, if there are a lot yeah. of uncomfortable silences. I mean, companionable silences are nice, you know, when you're with somebody that you're just comfortable in each other's presence. But if you're on a date and you're having a hard time finding things to talk about, I can remember this one date I went on really cute guy, you know, he's nice and everything and, you know, seemed smart. And for whatever reason, he felt compelled to bring out his phone on our date and show me YouTube videos. And I'm like, that's not really what I want to do on a date. I kind of wanted to talk to you and get to know you. It was just very odd. Were you at a restaurant? We were at a restaurant. Are watching YouTube? Yeah. I hate. He was like, here, look at this YouTube. And it's not like it was like a 10 second thing. It was like it was going on and on. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Can I say it? This is totally aside. I absolutely hate the people in the world that don't have headphones that just blare stuff <laughs> like hiking is the worst when the guy has like the, the yeah. bluetooth shit and he's just blaring to the woods I'm like i don't want to hear your music ha- put in headphones for god's sake like, same, uh, public same, places same. Wait, have headphones at the ready and mm-hmm. use them don't blare your crap publicly for everyone to hear your youtube video or your song or your podcast i don't want to hear it <laughs> and that's the rant of the day from zach schaumler <laughs> many more to follow okay <laughs> 
Another one that really gets me is when people have this kind of entitled attitude. You know, like they, um, mm -hmm. they're usually rude to servers and kind of asshole drivers and just feel like, you know, it's me, 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 me first, you know, that kind of attitude. I, I can't deal with that. Yeah. It sounds just, like yeah. being with someone nice is pretty important to you. Yeah. Nice. But nice <laughs> sounds so, I don't know, like milk toast, like maybe, boring. Maybe kind. Kind is the word. Um, I think kind's the right word. Yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. tender hearted is so like, Oh yeah. That's, that's how yeah. the girl I'm hanging out with described to me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's, it meant a lot to me. I was like, Oh, like she's like, I had no idea. Like she uh -huh. follows me on Instagram, but she's like, I had no idea how tender like you were until I got to know you in person. I was like, that's, yeah. that was pretty meaningful to me. Oh yeah. What a lovely compliment. Yes. And that's a wonderful trait. Um, another one that gets me is, um, when people have this kind of victim attitude, like that life is just out to get them and they have no control mm. over things. I can't hang with that either. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, dating friends, anything, man, like a victim mentality drives me nuts. Like, yeah. You know, I'm watching a uh, survivor, David versus Goliath, which mm -hmm. is like, I, I met the, I literally watched, I'm ha I just finished the first episode last night. So I have no idea what's going to happen in the show. Um, but it's so interesting that like they took people from one walk of life who've had been severely disadvantaged and then the other tribe of people are people who've been severely advantaged. They're doctors and lawyers mm -hmm. and had rich parents. And my guess and my estimate is that the people like the, the David tribe, the underdogs are going to win because they like have this. I, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but there's this like this attitude of we're going to overcome. Right. Rather than, oh, poor me. Like there was a giant loss early in the game. And the, the Goliath tribe who has been handed everything in their lives literally was like, oh, crap. And they couldn't deal with it. Mm -hmm. And the David tribe was handed a really tough thing. And they're like. Hell yeah, we're gonna take it on. We're gonna have, have this totally different attitude towards adversity. I was like, man, the way you handle yeah. low points in your life is—it's actually attractive to see someone who like I agree handles adversity really well. Yeah, that's called resilience, and mm. that's what you know—that's a life skill that all humans need. Because if you live any period of time, you're gonna have some kind of adversity. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So to learn how to roll with that um, and to come out better you know, and stronger, not, not weaker and feeling the weight of the world. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Not what better. Is, better, not bitter. Is that that? Better, not saying? bitter. That's yeah. so hard, man. Like it to is. be, oh, I, I really struggle with like not hanging on to the past. I mean, it all comes from my rejection, like my, my rejection and my pain from the past, but like to let go of it and try to be a bigger person and say like, to not hold it against someone is so difficult, but it's so important. It is. Agreed. Have you heard that saying it's something to the effect of how um, the universe will keep teaching you the lessons that you haven't learned? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so it's like if things keep coming around to you, it might be a sign that you have something to learn there. It's like the lesson I keep learning about sleep. Like, yeah. oh, I need to go to bed. I need exactly. to actually get a rest. It's really important. Like, I keep learning that lesson over and over again. Yeah. At some point, Zach, mm -hmm. fucking wake up and learn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. Good example. <laughs> What, what else? Do you have anything else? Uh, um, well, I think some ones that I think could be deal breakers um, for some people, and, and myself included, are like religion. Yeah. You know, if you're not kind of in the same camp on that, that can be problematic. Although, hopefully, I'm not oversharing. But, you know, your dad, I think, is a little bit more of a religious person. I am, I am not. Um, I consider myself spiritual, but I don't subscribe to any one religion. But, you know, yeah. it, it hasn't been a deal breaker for us. But I think in some relationships, it can be. Yeah. Um, I think politics is the same way. Yeah. I actually find it very hard to imagine what it would be like to be married to someone in, you know, an opposing political I, I think so, too. I, I couldn't I mean, date I just, someone I, who really... Yeah. I know that there are, are relationships where that does work, but that would be very hard for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, I don't... I, does it work? Like, I really, I, I really wonder about that, because I see people who just have completely opposing beliefs, and it's... Mm -hmm. They fight, and they struggle, and they butt heads a lot, and I'm like not even just about politics, about anything. Like when you really butt heads on significant parts of your life, it's like, does that, I, I, don't, I can't imagine that being fulfilling to me, but that's just me. Well, and I think that religion and politics both get down to some of those deeper values. And so I think that's why it's often problematic. You know, if you are in one camp that usually shows that you have some very deeply held beliefs, you know, that yeah. may not agree with the other. Well, I think it's interesting. I, I don't know how this fits in this conversation and I don't really mean to go there, but like, I, I actually I do mean to go there, but a lot of my, I have friends on both sides of the aisle. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I really, I have friends that are supporters on one side and supporters on the other, and we just hang out and I don't, it's, we just are friends. Mm -hmm. um, but the, we, with your best friend and maybe your partner, like, it should feel like a safe place to be, I don't, I don't even know, like, I guess maybe 
I, my best friends in the world have opposing beliefs on either sides, mm-hmm. but the the five of us can all hang out and have a civil conversation, of, even about politics, and it's safe because we're not in trouble. No one's going to hate each other. We're not going to walk away like punching each other and throwing fists because we're both understanding of it, one another's beliefs and one another's values. Like it, that's pretty cool to me. Like I'm very proud of that actually. That like yeah, I have friends about mm-hmm. one way and the other, and we all get drinks at the same bar together, and it's fine. Right. That's huge. And we even talk about politics, and we don't throw fists. That's that's one right. of my proudest accomplishments mm-hmm. in life is to be able to. Just have conversations and dialogue that's healthy. I think you're you're excellent at that. It's an aside, but um, I think you're very good at keeping your mind open, and that mm. makes for the most productive conversations and enjoyable. Yeah, it, it's fun because mm. you, you learn from everybody. I mean, yeah. I, think, I think everybody has good yeah. ideas to some. Somebody, so people have some mm-hmm. good ideas and some bad ideas everywhere. Mm-hmm. So if you're not open, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's an opportunity for everybody to grow. But that being said, you know, it's one thing if you're out at the bar for drinks with your friends and you can have, you know, a civilized conversation about differing views on religion or politics. But I think it would be different. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it would be different if it was with a partner well, where you're a, with I, them every day, you know. I love football. Football is mm-hmm. my favorite. My, it's my favorite thing in the world. It's my favorite sport in the world. If I was dating someone who's like, oh, football again, and just every day was trashing football or there were right. little snide comments about, Oh, football's the worst, or it's so dangerous, or this. I, I couldn't really, I don't think I could do that. I, yeah. I think it would just eventually slowly grade at my mind and drive me nuts. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a different thing if your partner maybe wasn't into football, but at least wasn't disparaging of it and yeah. respected that it was important to you. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think that to, could work. Uh, you know, <laughs> the girl I'm seeing, I think was, I kind of daunted at first, was like, you know, I don't care about football. I'm like, I don't, I don't care if you care about football. Like, I'm not here to talk about football with you. I talk about football for a living. I yeah. Don't, like, I don't need to go on dates and continue the conversation about the Super Bowl or the Patriots or the Chiefs or this or that. Like, I don't, right. don't want to do that. I, I like that my the person I'm seeing, you know, is kind of a break from sports. Yeah. But they're actually, yeah. you know, she's smart enough that, like, when I have an analogy I'm working on, mm-hmm. it helps that she doesn't know anything about football. Mm-hmm. So when I'm like, I can run the analogy by her, and if it still makes sense to her, she's a target audience. Hell yeah. Yeah. Anybody can understand mm-hmm. it. So it's actually kind of a strength. Yeah. Um, I think that we're what we're kind of showing, too, here is that deal breakers are personal, right? Yeah. Like, for you, for me, like, football, I wouldn't care less if they liked it or not. But yeah. for you, it's super important. Um so there are some things that are very personal. There are some, I think, that are also pretty obvious and maybe more general. You know, like you wouldn't, it would probably be a deal breaker if somebody was, a, you know, an addict of any kind or, mm-hmm. you know, um, if they were a cheater or a, a batter or something like that. I think that how we you, can... How do you draw that line? Like, so I, I've cheated in the past, right? Okay. Like I, mm-hmm. I cheated on someone in high school. I, it was very public. It really sucked. I lost mm-hmm. all my friends. Yeah. Uh, she was like the most popular girl in our hometown. And I'm not mm-hmm. even kidding. Like it really like affected my life for a couple of years. But how do you, how do you recover? Like, I'm not a cheater now. Mm-hmm. I, I did once. Yeah. How do you recover from that? Does that, how does that, is it, how do you, like, as a, as a woman, for example, if you're dating someone who's cheated on someone in the past, what do you do? How do you move forward? Um, how do you find out if someone's a serial cheater or not? Like, what, how does that all work? Oh, man, that's a really good one. Because I, I have no idea. Yeah. And I, I know that it's, um, it's caused a lot of hesitation with people because, and I really, I've ended up dating people that didn't know me in high school because of that. Because, mm-hmm. like, they couldn't get over, like, you cheated on this one girl that one time five years ago. I'm like, I, I did, but that's not who I am today. And some people can't see yeah. that, and I guess I just move forward. But mm-hmm. how do you move forward from that? Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. I mean, there again, we're talking about resilience, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, for you, you didn't let that, from what I understand, become a defining characteristic of you, right? No. You did it. It was a mistake. You recognized I own it. it as it was such, a huge mistake. Right? And I you, think it was good, a good mm-hmm. lesson for me to learn, as, as painful as that sounds. Like, yeah. I mean, you learned from it. Yeah. You suffered the consequences. Um, oh, yeah. But I think what you're asking is, what if you are the partner or potential partner of yeah. somebody that maybe had some indiscretions like that in the past? How do you, how do you move on from that? Um Boy, that's a good question. I mean, but I think that also is a type of resilience. Like, one, do you believe that people make mistakes and can mm-hmm. learn and grow from them? If well, you maybe, don't believe that, then I think yeah. you'd have a hard time ever moving on. I think I answered it while I was talking. Is like I, I am a very different person today right. than it was as a senior mm-hmm. in high school. Like, I mean, Zane mm-hmm. died. Um, I was like, let's think about where I was as a freshman in college. I was in a relationship. Before, it was before my brother died. I was headed to school to play college football, be an environmental science major. I'm now a college dropout with a professional career, working, making videos on YouTube, making podcasts. <laughs> like, my life is completely fucking different than it yeah. was five years ago. <laughs> the and if someone heading. can't recognize that, mm-hmm. I mean, like, 
I've done so much personal growth. I'm really proud of the personal growth I've done. And I've done it publicly on the internet. Like a lot mm-hmm. of people can see my mess of who I have been throughout the course of mm-hmm. the, my, my journey growing as a YouTuber. Like if someone can't see that or recognize that, maybe it's not worth my time either. Absolutely. And I, I know that we keep banging this drum, but I think it's worthwhile to do it again. And that's that you want to date somebody that has that ability to have some introspection, you know, and to realize mm. that people go through shit and that they can learn and grow from it. But yeah. if somebody that doesn't believe that's possible, that would make me very nervous because yeah. that means that they don't believe that's possible for themselves either. Oh, you know, ah, man, it's funny how much that just taught me about my past relationship. Ah. I, I, I don't want really, I, I don't need to say it too much, but like, I think they just always viewed me one way and they couldn't change their view of me. Yeah. Um, now, I think we'll get into that when we talk, the next episode, especially, okay. it'll be really fun. I'm kind of maybe teasing the next episode, okay, but good. <laughs> um, I just, man, that's so key. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Anything you want to add? I don't think so. I mean, we did talk about how these deal breakers, too, that sometimes they can change over time as well. Mm, as you grow um, as a person. As you as grow you, as a person. Yeah. yeah. Some things that maybe were important to you at one point in your life maybe aren't later on. I'm trying to think of an example. Do you have one? Um, I think that money used to be like a big one. I really Here's not even money, a career. Like I really wanted to be with someone who... Even, even like six months ago with someone who was like super motivated in their career. But as I've found my own success... Um, and my, it's interesting how right as I was beginning to find success as a YouTuber and beginning to find success, uh, podcasting, I was like, so into like, I need to find someone who's also got this thing. They're incredibly passionate about like, cause my, my job is my whole life. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's literally like my house is a mess because my dad came over Sunday night. We watched football, <laughs> made food ever since my dad left my house for the last 24 hours, 27 hours, whatever the hell it is. Now I was working on strong event in sports, getting the mm-hmm. podcast out and everything. And so it takes over my life. And I thought I needed to find someone who had a similar passion and a similar career that took over their life. And I was like, not really. No, I don't, I don't care. Like their career is their career. Mm -hmm. I want to be with someone who can go on dates with and have a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't need their career to be their light, like fire that lights their belly, you know, that like lights their life. Like the way mine is. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's really changed for me over the course of even the last six months. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, like their career isn't important to me. I have my own career. I'm pretty financially stable. Um, I, I don't need them to make a ton of money. I don't need them to really... I just don't care. It's their, it's their life. It's their career. Mine is mine. And that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think I just thought of one too, for me, like I'm thinking about when my younger years, like when I was more your age and dating, it's like whether or not they were a good parent or had good parent material really wasn't on my radar. But now that I have kids, it totally is. Yeah. I think one that's really, um, I, I think as I've, as I've grown more serious about dating, and I, I, re- I want to get married someday, like it's important to me, and I, I'd like to have kids, um, is when I'm dating someone, can I see myself having kids with them? Mm-hmm. I mean, can I, can I even imagine parenting a child with this person? And not in a creepy way, not in a bad way, but like, co- you have conversations. Like, how do you handle uh, the kid beating up someone in fifth grade? <laughs> or like, yeah. Or like stealing candy from 7-Eleven <laughs> or like whatever the hell it is. Like, mm-hmm. how do you handle those? And if you can't even imagine having those conversations, like... Right. Because... Mm-hmm. Like, am I Which are conversations you should have, by the way. You can't even talk about mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to talk about the 7-Eleven stealing? Like, you know, like, I don't know. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's that maybe the biggest, maybe a huge deal breaker is not just the, for me, personal growth, but it's also the ability to have conversations and about things with incredible depth about, mm-hmm. like, you, you said conversations, but it's not just having conversations at a bar. It's can you have those vulnerable conversations about real important issues? I mean, if you can't, I don't know, man. I, good luck. Good luck. Absolutely. Yeah. Karen, is that everything we have? I think that's it. All right, guys. This has been episode seven of the Desperately Dating Podcast. My name is Zach Schaumler. That has been my wonderful and wise stepmom. I found it. I found like the key phrase. You're wonderful and wise. The wonderful Aww. and wise Karen, that's her. My name is Zach Schaumler. Have a great day and take care.